Last year, 2021, I got married and I had a debt free wedding. Okay, my husband and I did not want to go into debt for what was essentially a party, a big party, a special party, an amazing party, but it was a party and we didn't want to go into debt for it. So I'm going to share with you my tips for budgeting and saving for your dream wedding. Go ahead and grab a drink, girl, get cozy. We are going to talk about everything, everything I did to save money in every area. And I'm going to go ahead and make some tea and then we will jump right into it. not the best at budgeting but i knew that when we were getting married that we would have to budget i would have to budget i'm more of a spender he's a saver but we had to come together we had to do this joint budget it was the first thing we ever budgeted for together and we agreed that we were not going into debt for our wedding and i'm so glad we made that decision and stuck to that decision so i'm gonna walk you through before the wedding the wedding day and post wedding and kind of everything in between of what we did to budget and save and hopefully i can provide some examples and tips and help you think a little bit outside the box on how you can save for your big day while still having a beautiful amazing wedding so the first thing you need to do is you need to determine that you are going to have the wedding you can afford like if y'all don't agree on that you are definitely going to veer off budget there were times where i was about to spend over budget because i wanted to have like pipe and drink that no one was even going to notice and drop an additional two grand that wasn't in the budget so i know what it's like i know what it's like to have that limited budget but we still were like we're having the wedding we can afford so whether our budget is four figures or five figures we are having the wedding that we can afford and i think it's really important to determine and really stick to that for both parties whoever whoever is the spender or if you're both spenders you need to like remember that you're having the wedding that you can afford that the wedding is one day it's an important day it's a big day but it's one day and that what you spend on the wedding and if you go over budget and if you get into debt that's going to spill over into your marriage right so the wedding is the beginning of your marriage and for us it just wasn't worth it to go into long-term debt for one day at the beginning of our marriage so the way we saved was through sinking funds and we started saving about six months before we got engaged and we also had a really short engagement at this point we had not combined our income so i was saving from my paycheck he was saving from his paycheck and then we brought the money together and that was our joint budget for the wedding if you're not familiar with sinking funds i'm going to pop a definition up on the screen but essentially it's a way for you to save money a little by little either each month or each paycheck and work towards a goal so what we did is individually and then together we looked at our budget and figured out like how much can we even put towards a wedding at the time i was on this debt-free journey and i'm still on a debt-free journey but i decided to pivot the money i was throwing at my extra debt because all that extra debt was low interest debt and i shifted some of that money to my wedding and this was temporary like i said we had a short engagement we were saving for about 10 months total and i decided that the money that i was putting towards debt would be better spent going towards my wedding for that specific year i'm not telling you not to pay your debt <laughs> and i'm not telling you how to manage your money i'm just telling you what we did but basically we were both able to contribute about the same amount each month and then we saved that month over month and that gave us what our working budget was at the time now we did end up asking family members for help and if you're like me like that felt very uncomfortable like i remember sitting down with my husband and like writing a letter and googling like how to ask your money for help for the wedding and looking back on it i was definitely way too stressed about it because i did have a handful of family members who were like super happy and super excited to help and every little bit helps like weddings are super expensive the average wedding last time i checked was like thirty five thousand dollars yeah okay so once you You've like determined that the budget is the budget. We're gonna have the wedding we can afford. You figure out how much you can save each month or each paycheck. And if you have any money already stored away in savings, if you wanna like reallocate some of that to the wedding, you know, look at your finances together and figure out where is the money coming from if you haven't already saved for your wedding. Or if you're like us, you're having a shorter engagement, you might have to think of some creative ways to build up this wedding fund. And then if you have family helping you, of course you factor that into your budget. If you don't have family helping you, 
then the budget is whatever you and your partner can save together. So planning stage. Before we even got engaged, we had talked about like, hey, we're getting married and we kind of knew roughly like when it was gonna happen. And literally like from that moment, I had already started kind of planning the wedding in my head. I feel like women, we do this. So um, I was here on YouTube and I found a bunch of wedding planners. And there was one in particular who kept talking about a course. She was like, I have this wedding planning course. It's X amount of dollars. I think it was like $300 at the time. And I was like, eh, that's kind of steep. And then literally like maybe a month or so after my husband and I started talking about we were gonna get married, she dropped the price of her course to like $30 a month and you could cancel at any time. So we hopped on that because for us, we recognize that we don't know what we don't know. So even though I had planned events at work before, I had never planned a wedding and I had never planned an event as big as a wedding. And I knew that a lot of money was gonna be going into this and I wanted to make sure we were doing it right. So we bought her course and it was one of the best purchases that we made during the entire process. She was able to walk us through every single detail like all the things that you would never know unless you planned a wedding before she walked us through it and that like the course paid for itself so i would highly recommend like getting a planner or an online planner of some sort i know because of everything happening with rona more wedding planners are offering online services we did still have a day of coordinator but before the day of coordinator we had that course and that course helped us set our priorities which is another important thing with saving for your wedding so my husband and I, when we sat down in the planning stage we looked at a list of priorities that we got from the course and we ranked it we were like this is the most important thing to me and we both narrowed down our, I think it was our top five our top three things that were the most important to us and what we were willing to spend more money on so we looked at okay this is how much we're gonna have by the time the wedding comes these are our priorities and then we started doing research to get estimates and from there we were able to allocate money towards the top priorities so even though we had got to a point where i was about to spend two grand on drapes when i looked at my priority list drapes were not on the list pipe and drape was not on the list I care more about my dress, I cared about photography, I cared about the food, the venue, things like that. Like I didn't really care about drapes. So even in the moment, you feel like you care about the drapes or the lighting or you know, the, how many tiers of cake. But if you set your priorities at the beginning, you can always go back and reference it later and figure out like what is really important to us? What are we willing to spend money on? Okay, so pre-wedding. A lot of people have multiple parties leading up to the wedding and it's sort of traditional, right? So like the bridal shower, bachelorette party, bachelor party, um, engagement party, any other parties you wanna throw in there. And we decided that we weren't gonna have all those parties so that we could cut down costs because it very easily got into the thousands of dollars and it was out of our budget. So we had a super short engagement and decided because our engagement was short and our budget was what it was, we weren't gonna have an engagement party. And I don't think anyone noticed or really even cared because we had a short engagement. And even if we had a long engagement, we probably would have still not had an engagement party because the budget is what the budget is. And I decided that I would rather put more money towards the wedding day than the pre-wedding parties. I was also on the fence about having a bridal shower, but one of my bridesmaids and my aunt threw me a bridal shower. And so all I had to do was fly up to the Bay Area and attend the party. So we saved money on the bridal shower. And then for the bachelor party, his friends, like all the guys, I think either all the groomsmen or all the guys who attended that day they pitched in so he didn't have to pay for that and he had a good time with them and then for my bachelorette party i was on the fence about having it mostly because of budget but also because of like the stereotypical bachelorette party i wasn't really interested in that so my bridesmaids and i had like a bachelorette day we went to the spa in the morning and then in the evening my bridesmaids and my cousins had dinner and one of my bridesmaids actually covered my dinner so that saved me more money i will say though like don't necessarily expect people to cover things like what for example with my bachelorette party i went into it anticipating paying and budgeting for paying and then when my bridesmaid covered it it was a nice surprise and i saved money that way but still like plan to have the money just in case because you don't know how things are going to pan out so if there's something you can't afford and you don't have the money for it i would recommend just not doing it versus like doing it and hoping or expecting someone to pay and then if they don't pay it's going to be weird you the expectation gap 
I would avoid that. The last event and probably the biggest pre-wedding event was our welcome mixer is what we called it. So instead of having a rehearsal dinner because those are very expensive, we decided to have what we call a welcome mixer or welcome party. Most of our guests were from out of town. So my husband is from the East Coast and I'm from Northern California and we got married in Southern California. So like 90, 95% of our guests that were flying or driving from out of town. And we wanted to have an event where they could kind of mix and mingle get to know each other some of them were meeting each other for the first time and this was the day before our wedding and we were actually gifted it so we had friends who helped us with securing the location we had family members who helped us with the day of like the food and just planning and organizing and decorating and it was amazing i knew where it was happening but i didn't know all the details but when i got there i was like so excited it was just beautiful and it was beautiful that it was an event i didn't have to plan okay ladies tips for your pre-wedding event and also wedding think about places where you can rent items especially all those white dresses white jumpsuits white whatever that you're gonna wear before the wedding personally i don't wear a lot of white i don't really have a lot of white formal outfits so i went through rent the runway and rented every single pre-wedding outfit that i wore i'm gonna pop some pictures up on the screen and I had actually already joined Rent the Runway through a promo like sign up. So I had a subscription and then I thought like, oh, I can use this for the pre-wedding event. So it worked out perfectly. I love those outfits. They looked great. No one knew it was rented. Not that that would really matter, but you can find great outfits that would work perfectly for, you know, bachelorette party, bridal shower, engagement party, and so on, and not have to necessarily spend money on buying an outfit, getting it tailored, all of that. So in addition to renting my pre-wedding outfits from Rent the Runway, I also rented my veil, which I didn't even know that was a thing. But again, I was on Rent the Runway. I was thinking of things that I might be able to rent for my wedding day. I looked at some jewelry, didn't actually find any jewelry that worked for me, but I found a veil and I rented it. I brought it to my dress try on and it looked beautiful. All we had to do was steam it. And then my cousin who styled my hair for the wedding day brought some barrettes and we sort of like personalized it. So, so wedding day, obviously the wedding day is gonna be way more expensive than anything you're doing pre-wedding. You are gonna have to do your research to find something that fits in a smaller budget. For our venue, we actually got two locations within the venue. So we had our outdoor wedding ceremony and our indoor reception. We also got all of the food. We had a hosted bar for a few hours. We had all of the rentals, so tables, chairs, uh, tablecloths, everything they charge you for in terms of rental, all of that was included in the price. And then we also got a bridal suite on site. So all of that was included in one price. And we actually had a plated sit down dinner and those tend to be a little bit more expensive, but we were able to get all of that at less than 50% of our budget. I wanna say maybe even 40% of our budget. So we were super happy and pleased with it. I know some people maybe don't wanna spend that much of their budget on all of that, but for what we were getting, it was absolutely worth it for us. And our wedding venue was technically a restaurant. So based on our priorities and list of tasks we had to do, I was tasked with finding the venue. So when I was doing my research, you know, I was I was searching for different types of venue. I was trying to get creative. I was like, okay, maybe we can do like Airbnb and turn it into our wedding venue. For us, that would have been way more expensive than what we paid because you have to like, basically take someone's backyard or someone's home and bring in everything you need to make a wedding. So you need to bring in your own tables, your own tablecloths, your own chairs, chair cushions, you need to bring in plate uh, utensils and glassware and all that stuff. So for us, it made more sense to go somewhere that had all that stuff versus like the Airbnb route. We thought Airbnb route was gonna be way too expensive based on the estimates I saw. We also considered having a wedding at like a public park or garden, but for similar reasons that didn't work out for us and I forgot exactly how I stumbled upon this but I ended up searching for restaurants and weddings like I put like weddings at restaurants in Los Angeles and kind of went from there and that's how we found our venue so our venue was technically a restaurant and it was super affordable compared to a lot of traditional wedding venues that had what we were looking for now in terms of vendors so think photographer videographer um, makeup artist security if you have security at your wedding DJ all of that all of those vendors we looked on thumbtack so from Thumbtack, we were able to find our DJ, our wedding coordinator, and I think we also found our driver on Thumbtack, or maybe, 
maybe not our driver on Thumbtack, but there are drivers on Thumbtack and Thumbtack was a great place for us to find local vendors within our budget. Okay, so I've covered venue and I've covered vendors. The next big thing for me was decor. So we actually thrifted a good amount of our decor and we saved a lot of money this way. So one thing that was important to me was candles candles are expensive. I found candles on offer up from someone else who had leftover candles from her wedding. Some of them were used, some of them weren't, but once the candles are burning, you can't really tell the difference. I also got a lot of decor on AliExpress super super cheap the shipping takes forever so definitely don't wait a week or two before your wedding you're going to want to get this at least a month maybe two months before the wedding but aliexpress was really great for decor etsy was also good for decor we got for example our cake topper from etsy that was more of a unique piece so we were willing to spend a little bit more and that's why we got it on etsy we also utilized amazon we got a lot of stuff on amazon and i also tried to get things that weren't super personalized because after the wedding i had plans to sell them which I have been able to do so that's another tip buy items that don't necessarily have to be personalized for example our cake server wasn't really a big deal and we can keep it or I can sell it to someone else and they can use it for their wedding or another party and with selling it you're able to recover some of the money you spent so think of it sort of like an investment if you will like you spend $20 on an item and then you get $10 back so really you only spend $10 on it to use it for your wedding day Another area that people can spend a lot of money on, but we didn't want to spend a lot of money on was our cake. So the cake for our guests actually came from Costco. We got that traditional half sheet cake. It serves about 40 to 5, 50 people. Recently, one of our friends actually commented and was like, you know, the cake at your wedding was really good. And we were thinking like, it's just Costco cake. Like we definitely saved a lot of money there and people love Costco cake. I love Costco cake. So we went ahead and served Costco cake. And really a lot of times wedding guests don't even eat the cake. So for us, that wasn't something that we want to spend a lot of money on. And then the cake that we had for cutting, we just got a super simple two tiered cake with a simple design. And then we decorated with our cake topper and called it a day. So all in all for cake, we spent not much more than a hundred dollars. I was super happy with that price. You don't have to spend a lot of money on something like a cake if you don't want to, and you can still get a beautiful traditional looking wedding cake. Another area that you're probably gonna spend money on, and it can be a lot of money or a little money depending on how you wanna approach it, is gifts. So we knew we wanted to give gifts to those who are closest to us in the wedding party and helping us plan everything and also using their time, their money, and effort to be a part of our wedding day, but we gifted strategically. So we gave gifts for the wedding day specifically. For the groomsmen, we gifted them ties and a gift card. For the bridesmaids, I gifted them robes, and then it was also something that they could wear the bridesmaids wore their robes before the wedding i did not personalize the robes as a way to save money and also as a way for them to be able to wear the robes in perpetuity if they want to so we kept it really simple with the gifts we also gave those same gifts to our parents and that helped us save money as well we did go ahead and give my bridesmaid their wedding day makeup and this is something you have to decide like if you want to spend money on it for me we were spending a lot of money on our photos and i wanted the photos to come out beautiful i wanted them all to look beautiful and feel beautiful so it was worth it to me to gift that to them but if you don't want to do that maybe you can gift them hair or if you don't care about hair or makeup or robes you don't have to do any of that stuff i'm just giving you tips on what i did and some ways that you could maybe save money another major area that can be really expensive is photography and videography based on our perception of it. We feel that photos are something that people look at more often over the years. Photos were also something that we were able to share out with all of our guests after the wedding versus video we will probably watch our video maybe once every few years i don't know we've watched it so far just once we got it back a few weeks ago um and we decided that it was worth it to spend more money on photos so we got our dream photographer and we spent less money on videography so it's not necessarily like the best videography or necessarily our style but we have the footage as something we can look back on and then we have these like beautiful classic timeless photos and a tip for saving money on your photographer if you have a set amount of money for photos go ahead and ask the photographer if they're willing to work within your budget now 
there is a caveat you don't want to like disrespect anyone by offering them a really really like low ball offer but for me when i was reaching out to photographers there was one photographer who got back to me i kind of like told her our story and said hey like this is how much money we have for photos and she said i would be willing to do it but i'm booked that day continue asking other photographers you, you will be surprised who will work within your budget and we ended up finding our dream photographer who is amazing i love her style of photography and she did it within our budget so so super grateful for that and I think it's just a testament to you never know until you ask so there might be some vendors who are willing to work within your budget but you just have to be transparent and let them know like hey this is my budget can you work with it if yes great if not no move on and find someone else who can work within your budget flowers we save money on flowers I only had fresh flowers in my bouquet the bridesmaids bouquet and then on our wedding arch and we repurposed those flowers for our sweetheart table everything else was dried florals from Etsy transportation so we did not provide transportation for all of our guests because the hotel where we had our broom block at was broom block at was literally one block away from the venue so everyone could walk over but we did rent a car through I'm forgetting the name. I'm gonna ask my husband and pop it up on the screen. So we rented a car and then we got a driver from driver i think that's the name of the site driver and so the driver was able to take over the parents the wedding party the bride and groom um just so we didn't have to walk with all of our stuff you know we had lots of bags and my wedding dress and all those things so that's another way you can save money in terms of the wedding day and then in terms of attire for the bride and groom so for me the dress was really important and i was willing to spend maybe a little bit more than i would normally spend on the dress but everything else i saved money so my shoes were super cheap i believe i got them from like dsw 40 bucks i got my jewelry from amazon every piece of jewelry i was wearing except for the wedding ring and engagement ring of course came from amazon and i kept it super simple in terms of accessories i really wanted my dress to be like the star of the show so i didn't really over decorate myself in that sense i wanted everyone to be able to really see my dress and appreciate the details i kept my hair simple my cousin did my hair that was actually a gift from her so that's the way i saved money if you have anyone in your family member who is a professional hairstylist or makeup artist or someone who's just really good at hair and makeup and willing to do it for you that could be an awesome way that you save money as well and then my husband rented his suit and he looked amazing for men the groom and the groomsmen to rent their suits so that's another way that everyone was able to save money for the wedding day and then post wedding we didn't have any post wedding events there were a few people kind of in our ear saying oh you should have like a post wedding brunch or an after party or something like that and i agree those things are super super fun but for us it wasn't in the budget and we did not want to stretch ourselves to then for our honeymoon we were able to honeymoon in mexico and we had an amazing time on our registry our honeymoon fun was actually one of the things we sort of pushed and the way we did that is that we had our honeymoon fun and then we had a few physical items as well but we didn't load up our registry with tons of physical items mainly because we both sort of had everything we needed we both lived alone before moving in together so we didn't necessarily need more kitchen appliances and things like that so we had a few items and like physical items on the registry and then we had our honeymoon fund and we sort of encouraged people to donate to our honeymoon fund and that helped us save money on the wedding we had our dream honeymoon so our honeymoon was gifted to us by everyone who donated to the honeymoon fund and we had an amazing time and I'm so glad we were able to take the honeymoon right after the wedding it was so much fun it was great to have that time off work and just enjoy being newlyweds and then a few additional tips on how to save money and budget for your wedding is to stay off social media about two months before my wedding i completely unplugged from social especially instagram because i found myself sort of falling into this comparison trap there was just so many like wedding hacks and cool diys and this person got her dress from here and then she got these shoes and i just found myself kind of going into this comparison trap and i realized that it was kind of i don't want to say forcing me but I felt pressure to kind of spend money on things that I didn't necessarily need and things that we didn't agree were priorities. So just my recommendation, just my tip, but staying off of social media definitely helped us save money for the wedding. And then my final tip is, and it's difficult, it's difficult. Like I was in these shoes, so I know what it's like, but try to think past the wedding day. Like 
there were things that I was so consumed with and worried about and just felt like we had to throw money at it because if not then my wedding would look cheap or whatever just all these ideas in my head and honestly I barely noticed it during the wedding day there were some things I completely forgot about and then after the fact I was like oh we didn't we didn't get the up lights remember when our DJ said we could have up lights and that was an extra you know $500 whatever it was I'm glad we didn't spend money on that because no one cared about the up lights no one cared about the pipe and drape there were so many things like that where I'm like I'm so glad we didn't spend extra money on that not because it wouldn't have been beautiful but because it wasn't in our budget and it didn't really matter regardless of what's happening on social media regardless of any pressure you might have from family or friends, have the wedding you can afford because if you believe that it's not worth it to get into debt for one day, then don't get into debt for one day. Even if you have a small wedding, you can have a courtyard wedding, you can have a wedding at a park, you can have a wedding at a restaurant, you can have a beautiful wedding within budget and without going into debt. So I really hope these tips and examples I share can help you budget and save for a beautiful wedding that you can afford without going into debt drop a comment below and let me know if there's anything i mentioned in the video that you hadn't heard before if you have any other questions about budgeting and saving for your wedding